What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Paul. And joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian. The Fantastic Forecast has been announced, is confirmed. We knew who the people, who were the actors they were looking at for these roles. Um, except for Pedro Pascal, many people are really uh, quite satisfied with those those choices. I'm satisfied with Pedro Pascal. I'm going to say it here, and I'm going to, I'm going to say it again. Pedro Pascal is going to be the best. And that's not saying much because there has been no best of, <laughs> of Reed Richards. But he will be the Christopher Reeve. As what well, Christopher Reeve was a Superman, Pedro Pascal is going to be the Reed Richards. Brian, your thoughts on um, the cast? I mean, we already knew, but now that they've confirmed it, what are your thoughts on the Fantastic Four? Yeah, look, I mean, at least they, I'm glad they got it done. It seemed like there were some delays to getting everyone signed and sealed, but we're there, and it is the four that were rumored. So, yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm not as high as you on Pascal yet. You will certainly be the one to take victory laps if he delivers a, uh, an immortal performance as Reed Richards. Uh, I am expecting tr- true greatness from Vanessa Kirby. I think she's a perfect Sue Storm, and I think she's never been bad in anything I've I've seen her do. So I'm expecting great things there. Evan Moss Backrock definitely star on the rise. You know, much better known as a character actor right now, and or the Bear, most notably. But he's he's got the he's got the chops. I'm not worried about his ability to act and inhabit Ben Grimm. I'm probably more worried about what the effects and costume department is going to do to make our thing look as thing as possible. And Joseph Quinn, I think. I'm not as familiar. People are high on his work to date. Uh, he hasn't really done the big mainstream or the big blockbuster thing yet. So I think that's probably good for him. Like he can kind of use that to shape Johnny Storm in a way that is different than, you know, Chris Evans Chris and Evans. Michael B. Jordan, who are kind of higher, I, I think now certainly higher profile than, than he is. So I think that's probably to his advantage. But again, the thing we can't see that will drive this is – you know, does one plus one plus one plus one equal something greater than four? That's really what this comes down to. Do these four together as pairs, as trio, and when all four together as the first family on screen, does the chemistry crackle? Because if it does, then this movie probably can go places. And if it's flat and if it's awkward and if it's stilted the way it was in both prior iterations of the Fantastic Four, we're probably going to be disappointed again. So, you know, I love the image. I thought the Valentine's Day image was kind of cute. It was kind of a, a nice nod to the history. Um, but there's still so many questions here that um, I think we need to see footage. We need to see, you know, get a better sense of where this story is headed. And Disney obviously already is tweaking the, the release date again, pushing this back to July of 2025. And I'm just kind of looking and saying, look, we just got a cast sign. We got a director. We don't have a finished script. Like, you know, we're approaching the end of the first quarter of 2024. Like even getting to July 25 to me seems like a reach. I would not be surprised if this goes to 2026 for a variety of reasons, but it's looking awfully rushed to me to get this done. Brian, I would have to say that they've had this story and pre-production ready to go for quite some time. They've had the script possibly reworked it perhaps, and they just needed their actors to be ready for um, what ready for um, um, start date. The fact, what's interesting, Brian, are the, are the date changes. When is Superman Legacy supposed to come out? Yeah, okay. So this will be part of the bigger discussion. But right now, Superman Legacy, which I would say is a lock to hold its date because we know they're table reading this week and they are shooting in March. So July 11th is their date, but they are locked and loaded to go. So that to me works, right? You're doing a, you're doing a March shoot. You're probably done by May or June. You got a full year to do post and you're ready to go on July 11th. We know James Gunn's a pretty efficient worker and always has been in the past. So that movie's not moving. Right now, Fantastic Four is a July 25th, two weeks later on the latest release date. Your thoughts on two weeks later, Fantastic Four, and and two weeks after Legacy, what are your thoughts on that date? Given only two, giving them only two weeks to shine. To me, Brian, can I speculate a little bit? This is what I think. The word is out, Brian. Superman Legacy isn't that great. We can compete. 
There's another movie that's supposed to come out a week before Superman Legacy. I don't know what that movie is. Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's supposed to be Jurassic World 4. Okay. Oh my God. That's not happening. It's not happening. We'll get into it. Okay. It's not happening. But that's what's okay. tentatively scheduled right now for that okay. day. Yeah. So the fact that people are putting out dates around Superman Legacy, Brian, only leads me to believe that people are really thinking that they can possibly take away from Superman Legacy. And that the movie, perhaps the story, isn't that great. Now, we don't know what the chemistry is because they haven't done anything. They're, you know, they're, they're going through the process now. If that is the case, Brian, if, Brian, let, let's just say Superman Legacy doesn't live up to that. We already know, Brian, that Sazlop is going to sell. Because we know, because we know, what what do we know? What, we, what we've been saying? Superman Legacy doesn't work. Superman Legacy doesn't work. It's over. What the, What is there else to do if Superman, your number one guy, the one that started it all, cannot deliver on creating the dream that Zaslov wants of elevating the value of this IP so he can do what he needs to do with it, Brian? It just smells fishy to me that the MCU would try to compete with Superman Legacy, Brian. So, uh, two weeks after, that's 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 weird to me. So I see what you're saying. I don't 100% agree. Um, however, if I was to buy into this for a second, betting against Superman on the big screen has not been that bad of a bet for the last... 40 years. Not that there's been a lot of movies, but if we're being fair, Mm -hmm. like Man of Steel was a big opening weekend, but kind of petered out, was ultimately kind of a disappointment financially. Superman Returns was definitely a disappointment financially. And obviously the end of the Christopher Reeve era, we'd generally rather not think about. So you probably have to go back to Superman 2 in 1980 to have a place where, or Superman 2 in 1981, to have a moment where people thought Superman 2 was legitimately going to be the movie to be. And oh, by the way, you know what movie actually wound up absolutely destroying that movie the same summer? It was Raiders of the Lost Ark. So oh, wow. not that Superman 2 wound up being bad. That's a funny cinematic history. But Raiders of the Lost Ark opened like the week before Superman 2. <clears throat> and I think Raiders of the Lost Ark was the number one movie for like nine weeks in a row. Wow. <laughs> so, um, so the point is, Superman hasn't been a character you generally have feared at the box office. That's kind of been the truth. Sure. Com- versus Batman generally has been a very poor bet to bet against, right? Batman and Robin, obviously not good, but like even Batman and Forever was, I think it was like the highest grossing movie of 1995. Like sure. Batman movies generally make money. Like you want to line up against Batman, you're probably going to go down. Yeah. So... I can sort of see Marvel's argument that, like, Superman as a character, should we really be afraid? Now, I do think a lot of this is because of the strike. I got to be honest with you. This is why I don't 100% agree with you. Because okay. if, you, if you look at what we're going to be talking about in 2024, we got one Marvel movie in Deadpool. We got one DC movie in Joker 2. We also have not a lot of franchise fare anywhere. Like you gotta, this is a year for original programming quite honestly. And, but 2025 is the revenge of the franchise. <laughs> so you only got 12 months to work with. And if we're being honest, you never release big movies in January. You never release big movies generally like in the end of summer. Um, you generally don't even release huge movies around Halloween. So kind of like you're really looking at generally there's like nine months where you can viably release big tentpole films. And the summer tends to be the biggest spot. Let me read you the roster. Okay. And I, I, there's not going to be a number one in front of any of these. Fantastic Four, Superman Legacy, Captain America 4, Blade, Thunderbolts, Batman Part 2, 
Fast and Furious 11, Mission Impossible 8, Avatar 3, Jurassic World 4, Wicked 2, Zootopia 2, and the live-action adaptation of How to Train Your Dragon are all slated to release in 2025. So wherever you put your movie, you're going to have competition from an equally budgeted brand name project somewhere. Yeah. Does Zaslov need, how much money does the Zaslov walk away like, okay, we can keep on going? What does Zaslov need to see in order not to sell uh, DCIP? <laughs> because Brian, let's let's keep let's keep it let's keep it one hundred. If 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 Legacy doesn't perform, what what is there to continue doing? Right? What is there? We see in DCIP all over the place. They are Netflix. They're here. They're there. They they are they, this. They're licensing they it out. They're getting yeah, them picking yeah. cash. They need cash. That's cash. That's we need cash. That's what. That's what. When you see those everywhere, that's a tr- code for keeping it on max. <clears throat> is not economic for us. If we're better off taking a fee to have Netflix show our our series and our films, have Amazon show our series and our films, and spread the wealth around. But we get cash. That's what it says. Okay. I agree. Look, I agree with you that the universe is dead on arrival. If Superman Legacy is a disaster. I don't think it has to make a billion dollars for him to be no. like that's the bare minimum, right? That we know, but it needs to make money. Yeah, but I mean, the, but this is actually, I don't think this is going to be as budgeted as high as some of the top Marvel films. I think it's going to be more in the no. one, I think it's going to be more 150, 175. Yeah. So honestly, I think 125 to 150. So if that's the case, then honestly, if the gross is anywhere above 600, 650, it will be a commercial success. And if it's critically, generally acclaimed, which most James Gunn projects have been, I think mm-hmm. you call that a win and you 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 move on to the next project. Now, there are going to be multiple projects released because that's always how this works. But yeah, you're right. I mean, I think if Superman Legacy is a disaster, then we may never see Brave and the Bold. You know, something like that. We may we'll never see Swamp Thing. We'll never see some of those other things they they had down down the pike. We're going to see Creature Commando. We're going to see Superman. I think we're going to see Supergirl no matter what. I think those are going to happen. Um, but some of those other projects will not. Um, but I got to be honest. I mean, I don't necessarily view fantastic. You know, in the old days, when these things used to generally open big and be good movies, having another blockbuster come two weeks or three weeks later was not necessarily something that derailed your project. Yeah. It just meant you had to have that huge opening weekend. You got that weekend to yourself. And then mm-hmm. the box office would drop, you know, 40, 50% the next two weekends. And then there'd be room for another huge movie to come in and make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Okay. But on that list that I gave you, <clears throat> I would argue there is only one movie that every studio will look to avoid, and it's Avatar 3. That's it. I think that's the only one where you say, listen, man, this guy prints two billion. Like it's his brush of his teeth. We don't want to mess with that. And that's gonna be at Christmas, right? So I think every other movie, you're gonna be spaced two and three weeks apart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Fantastic Four cast being finalized. Yes. Last point is I think the calendar I just read you is not all gonna happen. Um, I think well, first off, Jurassic World was supposedly trying to get David Leach, who is the director of um, one of the well, one of the Deadpool movies, one of the, uh, John Wick, um, Hobbs and Shaw, uh, Bullet Train, and he backed out last week. So they don't have a director, they don't have a finished script yet, and they don't have a cast because they're recasting everyone. There's no way that movie's coming out July 4th, 20. Like, think about it. Superman Legacy is cast, crewed, and is yeah, shooting yeah, 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 this yeah. next month. Jurassic World. Oh. So that movie's going to 2026, in my opinion. There's already rumors that Blade is going to go to 2026, which would not surprise me, given that I, Iger did not reference it on their most recent call. I still think there's a chance Fantastic Four could get pushed to at least later in the year, to that Blade mm-hmm. slot in the fall. That would not surprise me. So this calendar is going to change. That's yeah. the one thing. Like, they're just, it, my point is, there isn't room for all these movies to be successful, which usually mm-hmm. means that several of them punt and go to the next yeah, 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 yeah. Let us know in the conversation below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Report. The show goes on! Yeah!